friends, it's Mally. Welcome back to my channel. So today I have a word for you guys that God gave me and I actually preached on this last Sunday at my church. But I wanted to come on here and just film a video and just tell you guys what I talked about on Sunday. So the word that God give, that God gave me was this. I was flipping through my Bible and I was going to the chapter of Matthew, but as I was flipping there, God told me to stop in Ephesians. Now, personally, I have really been reading in Matthew right now and I have not been reading in Ephesians recently. So this was just like out of the blue, completely God. And he told me to read these two verses that I had highlighted over a year ago. And so I'm going to read you guys what the verses are. But the first thing is, as I was reading these verses to myself during my Bible time, I felt God tell me this. I can't so all confusion. And I thought that was so good because in our time, in our generation, our day and age, there's a lot of confusion, a lot of things that we just don't know what to believe. For example, I mean, influencers, they will push these certain things that the enemy like feeds into the world and tells us all these lies, things that will confuse our identity, our gender, um, how we vote, politics, every little thing. I mean, the enemy will put into like influencers and stuff so that they start posting this stuff and people that follow them will start to believe the same thing. And at this point, a lot of times you just get kind of confused. You know, you don't know what to believe because of all the lies. You don't know it's the truth anymore. So I thought the Lord told me very clearly, I want you to tell my children that I cancel all confusion. And if you know me and you know my truth, you won't be confused. So here's the verses that he showed me. First, so the first one was in Ephesians 4, 8, 17 through 18. I'm going to read it to you guys. And here's what it says. So with the wisdom given to me from the Lord, I say, you should not live like the unbelievers around you who walk in their empty delusions. Their corrupted logic has been clouded because their hearts are so far from God. Their blinded understandings or deep-seated moral darkness keeps them from the true knowledge of God. So during this time of the Bible, this is Paul. He's writing about what's going on in his time, his day and age, the current events. And I felt God show me this exact thing that Paul was writing about at that time is happening right now today too. And I want you to tell my children the reason that they're confused is because their hearts are so far from me. And here's the next verse God showed me. It's in Ephesians 5 and it's verse 1. Here's what it says. Be imitators of God in everything you do. For then you will represent your father as his beloved sons and daughters. And I love that. Oh my gosh. Because it said, if you become like me, if you begin to imitate who I am, then you know me. I think of John the Beloved. He was beloved by Christ. And it said many times in the Bible, whenever they were like, he was talking to his disciples, John would go and lean his head on the heart, on the chest of Jesus. And that is because he wanted to hear his heartbeat. And I think that's so, I think that's just so precious and sweet because not only was he like physically hearing Christ's heartbeat, but he was so close to Christ that he knew him. And so I think of it like this. Whenever I am close to one of my friends, then I, um, the more I know about them, the more I know the intentions of their heart. I know a lot of the reason their heart beats. You know, I know what their purpose is. I know what they're longing for in life. And so the more you get close to someone, the more you feel their heartbeat. And in that same way, God is calling us to get close to him so we can hear his heartbeat and we know what the intentions of his heart are. Whenever we know why he created us and what purpose he created us for, then we won't spend a day in our life confused because we know his truth about ourselves. And that's exactly where confidence comes into play. Whenever you know the reason God created you, you're not confused about why you're a certain way. You won't spend a day in your life wishing you had someone else's life because you were thankful for the way that God created you because he created you for a purpose. Okay, so with that being said, what God is saying in these two verses is we are called to become more and more in God's likeness every day. And he said, when your hearts are far from me, then your mind becomes clouded and your logic becomes corrupt. But later it begins to say, if you become imitators of me, then you will become like me and you won't be confused. And I just love the, that God was telling me that. Another verse that came to my mind is John 10, 10. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come to give you life and life to the fullest. And I love that because I can just see in like my generation, in our world, that often teenagers, they long for two things. They long to be loved and they long to be validated. And so what they do is they go out into the world and they look for love. They look for validation in front of into all of these worldly things. And whenever they don't find that, that's whenever they fall into depression, anxiety, suicidal thoughts, things like that. Because they look to the world for love. They look to the world for validation. And whenever they don't receive it, then they get into that despair and hope. But the thing is, 
the enemy has put into the world all of these things because the enemy's ultimate goal is to destroy us. So if we are looking for worldly things that the enemy is designed to destroy us, that's whenever you start seeing people fall into depression. But the thing is, that is exactly what the enemy is trying to do. And we have to know Whenever we look for love, God is the very definition of love. So whenever we look for that, we should be, we're ultimately longing for God. We just don't know it. So I just want to tell all of my teenage friends and all of my friends from all over the world that if you are, if you are looking for validation, if you're looking for love, you're not going to always find that in the world. Sure. There's going to be some amazing God sins that are going to come into your life, but ultimately what you are longing for is God because God is the very definition of love. He fully knows you. I mean, some of the things that I can see people, they get scared because they don't want people to know about their past. They don't want to know about who they are really, things like that. But the thing is, God already knows you. He knows every detail about you. You don't even have to tell him. He already knows. And he still fully loves you no matter what. That is the most purest form of love. That it doesn't matter how many mistakes you make, he is still going to love you no matter what. I think that is so amazing. So anyways, like I was saying, the teenagers and just people in general, they long for love and validation. And whenever they look to it in worldly things and they don't find it, that's whenever they fall into all those like depression and things like that. And that is exactly what the enemy wants to happen. But let me tell you this, on the flip side, if we know the essence of who God is, we won't be depressed because God didn't call us to be that way. So um, actually, I have a Bible study that I do here in my hometown. And one of the things that God put on my heart to share at this Bible study that I shared a couple weeks ago was the essence of who God is. So whenever he showed me that and he said, I want you to teach my children the essence of who I am, because that's what they need to know in this hour, in this confused world, they need to know who I am. So I said, okay, God, what does the word essence mean? And I looked it up and it is this, the essence is the core nature of something. So God was telling me, I want you to teach my children the core nature of who I am. And so like I was saying, our generation, they're longing for something and they're longing for God. They just don't know it because he is their creator and he's the definition of love. So I begin to ask God, God, what does your heart be for us? What does your heart be for your children? If you want me to teach them the essence of who you are, I want to know what your heartbeat is. And he told me this, my heartbeat is for my daughters. It's for my sons. And so he began to show me in the Bible in James 4 and 8 right here, which I'm going to do a whole other video on James because I've really been reading in it because God's had my heart there and it is so good. It's so filled with stuff. So be watching out for that video. I mean, it's going to be about James. But in James 4 and 5, here's what it says. Does the scripture mean nothing to you that says the spirit that God breathed into our hearts is a jealous lover who intensely desires to have more and more of us? Okay, wow. That verse is so good because it says, God is a jealous lover and he intensely, intensely beloves us and desires to have more and more of us every time. And so, like I was saying, teenagers, they're longing for something. And the thing is, God is longing for us too. He, he created us and now he wants a relationship with us. And so, a couple verses down in James 4 and 8, here's what it says. If you move your heart closer to God, he comes closer to you. And I love that because it says... Um, it sets up, this is the true definition of what love is. God is the definition of love. And how do I get closer to him? Then it goes on to say, draw near to God and he draws near to you. So it is so easily set up for us and says, if you want to have a relationship with God, draw near to him. And he is already waiting for you. He is already intensely desiring that relationship with you. And if you take that step, he takes a step closer to you because he wants a relationship with you. Okay, so the last thing I want to share with you guys is this. Whenever I was praying, I was like, okay, God, you have shown me what true love is. You've shown me what your heartbeat is, but how do I become a true seeker of who you are? How do I spend the rest of my life going after you? How do I truly begin to seek you? And as I was looking through my Bible in prayer and I was praying this, he immediately showed me John 12, 23 through 26. And it is so good. And I'm going to read it to you guys. Here's what it says. He replied to them, now is the time for the son of man to be glorified. Let me make this clear. A single grain of wheat will never be more than a single grain of wheat unless it drops to the ground and dies because then it sprouts and produces a, gar a great harvest of wheat all because one grain died. The person who loves his life and pampers himself will miss the true meaning of life. But the one who det detaches his life from the world and abandons himself to me 
they will find the true life and enjoy it forever. If you want to be my disciple, follow me and you will go where I'm going. And if you truly follow me as my disciple, my father will shower his favor upon your life. Okay, there's so much good stuff in that verse. And I'm just going to quickly break it down for you. First of all, I love that, like show, how it showed us that a single seed of wheat is never going to be more than a seed of wheat unless it drops to the ground and dies. If it dies to its flesh, then it sprouted into something new. And in that same way, God is calling us to do that. He's calling us to die to our flesh every day, die to our worldly desires so that we can become more in his likeness. Because the thing is, God made us in his likeness. So we are to die to our worldly flesh, our worldly desires, the normalized things, what God is, what the world tells us we need to do. You know, sin has become normalized in our world. And the thing is, God is saying, I want you to die to that because that is not who I am. You know, we live in this world, but we're not of it. We are not called to live in accordance to the way this world works, but we are called to become died to the way that the world is so we can become more in God's likeness. And okay, that is so powerful, first of all. Okay, second of all, I love how it says, if you want to be my disciple, because whenever I had like a crazy God encounter, the first thing I prayed was, I said, God, I want to become radical and like a disciple. So you know what I did? Whenever I prayed that prayer, I began to study in the Bible, in God's words, what it means to be a disciple. And this is one of the things he showed me. And I went through Matthew 10 and I went to all the teachings, whenever Jesus would teach his disciples. And I said, God, I want to be like that. And that's where I really gleaned from that. But anyways, so tr being a true seeker of Christ, if you want to know God, if you want to radically have a relationship with him and begin to live radically for him, this is this is what you need to study. This is what you need to live your life on. And that is what I try to live my life on every single day. God, I want to die to my flesh daily. I don't want to be, I'm from this world, but I'm not of it. I want to die to all of my worldly desires so that I can accept the call that you have on my life. And God said, whenever you walk with God, I think of Enoch in the Bible. Oh my gosh, Enoch is literally such an amazing person. I could talk about him all day, but he walked with God. I mean, there are so many times in the Bible whenever it'll say, so-and-so prayed to God, so-and-so worshiped to God. But it said in the Bible, Enoch walked with God. That means he lived every single day of his life going after God and just spending time with him like he was a cl closer than a friend. And I just love that. So God, I said, I strive to walk with you every day. And whenever you walk with God, he begins to speak to you. Let me tell you, I, you know, I used to live just a normal teenager life. It was just day to day, you know, just normal stuff. But whenever I decided to live radically for God and throw my life down for the care, I decided to throw down my worldly desires to become more like God. Let me tell you, he speaks to me all the time. Every single day, God speaks to me. And he begins to tell me, Matt, whenever someone says something and if they're lying, God will tell me about Matt, like they're lying to you. And then he just speaks to me all day of the day. And let me tell you, if we do that, that is whenever God cancels out all confusion. He tells us what's real, what's fake. If we walk with him, if we become a true seeker of who he is. So that's it. That's the word. I hope you guys enjoyed it. That This word seriously really encouraged me. I hope you guys will just, if this is speaking to you, I encourage you to just go back and listen to this video. And I hope this encouraged you guys. And I will see you guys later. Bye.